Hi, Rocky Jockeys. This is Gavin Wood. The old 3XY still happens. I'm very excited to be talking about the Victorian Seniors Festival with a senior himself, Rod Hardy. I've got no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> The first day I met you was in West Hollywood, of all places. It was, yes. And I was sitting in the back of the convertible and we were driving up to a restaurant or something. And then I, I'd never seen it and it blew me away. I'd never seen it before. And you said, now, Gavin, tell me about your life. <laughs> and I was just about to say, well, and you turned the radio up full blast. That was my old trick. It, yeah. it was a great trick. <laughs> I loved living in Los Angeles. Did you have a good experience there? Yeah, the first 10 years, fantastic. It's kind of courageous going to the States, isn't it? If you think about it, you yeah. become an immigrant. You've got to respect the country. I, I, and you've seen it. You've seen the young guys, you know, full of, full of it. You know, they've come in, they're going to be the next Russell Crowe, the next uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth. I remembered in the days uh, when I first got there and there were people like Russell Crowe and all of them, Naomi Watts, and they're all there struggling away trying to find that first gig hmm. and and along the journey you'd hear them go oh I think I'm done and then there's the moment that suddenly gets you it's like a poker machine yeah you pull the handle and you've all the money drops down it was interesting how as Australians we herded ourselves together because no matter how long you're there in the United States you still have that sense of I still call Australia home it's the yeah, biggest sure. stage in the world because everybody around the world is trying to get to Hollywood you know what worked for me and the 30 years of being there. Well, I think taking a risk at times is something really important. You, you took a risk. Well, I want to, uh, you know, I, I did Tatch Lotto here on Channel 7 for 15 years every Saturday night yeah. doing one kind of lottery. Hi everyone, Gavin Wood here to draw tonight's lucky numbers with Saturday Lotto and Super 66. I never won once, you know. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> so I wanted to do something else, you know. I wanted to get off the island a bit, you know. And I ended up winning a, a green card lottery, which, you know, they give out 70,000 green card little marbles and then you go through the process. And I did all the paperwork myself and yeah. all of that and I was quite proud of that. And um, I, I got there and I didn't realise how important and, 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 and how much a green card was worth. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was 55, I should have been 35. Yeah. But I didn't have the wherewithal back then. But does it make any difference with age, do you think? Uh, no, no, you've, you've got to be positive. You, you, uh, you've got to be positive. Sure. And, and I didn't want to be that guy that sits on the porch at 70 saying, you know that green card thing, I, yeah. I should have done it. Yeah. yeah. I went over when I was in my early 40s. Right. And I don't think it matters. Somebody was saying, you've got to be young. I don't think that's the case. You have to be enthusiastic. Yes. I remember being at this party and I was standing outside talking to somebody and I heard a saxophone playing uh, through the, the loudspeaker system and it was um, Kenny G. Yes. Oh, how wonderful. And then I looked into the window and there's Kenny G standing in the corner playing. Oh, and live. Which was, which was terrific. Yeah. But Barbara Streisand was there sitting 10 feet away right. with her back to him talking all the way through his performance. Oh, no. And I thought how rude that was. Yeah. Anyway, I go up and I speak to him and I said, you know, by the way, I thought it was really strange that Barbara Streisand just didn't pay any attention. He said, welcome to Malibu. That's life. Yeah. But do you think, you know, I mean, I would still take a big risk. I would still take a move and, and go back to the United States. You would rather not. I uh, know. This is the greatest city in the world. And, I, and I'm not disagreeing with that. I think it is. But I, I like the challenge of new things. And mm. do, do you think you get too old to do that at times or is it is that just an attitude my father and his mates you know they work for 40 years for Telstra then they look forward to that retirement at 60 yeah. then they all of a sudden the wife says I married you for life not for lunch get out of my house so they go and join a bowls club yeah and they're there for three years and four or five years later they're dead yeah I yeah. and I I don't retirement is not in my not in my vocabulary. The entertainment business doesn't seem to have a retirement time. It just, they just don't tell you when you're retired. <laughs> you kind of sit there going, nobody's returning the phone calls. Yes. <laughs> well, it's that realisation when you become invisible. You know, yeah. when you'd walk into a room and, and you could sense, you know, a few ladies would turn their head or whatever. And then all of a sudden you get to an age and no one's turning their head. The invisible man's club. <laughs> yes, the invisible man's club. Yeah. But that's okay. You cope with that and you get on with life. Yeah, sure. I think um, at the end of the day, living in Los Angeles was a great experience, but it is good to be back in Melbourne again. The galleries, the National Gallery is yes. fabulous. Yeah. Melbourne over 30 years has changed so, so amazingly. You started 
in the halcyon days of television drama. I mean, you talk about Cop Shop, uh, Solo One. I started at Crawford's when I was about uh, seven, 18. Mm. And then I was directing by the, by the time I was 21. That's insane. They, it was a great place, Crawford's. I mean, they really gave us an opportunity. They didn't pay us very much. No, but, but you they learnt. Gave, they gave us an opportunity. My fascination with going and working in television started when I lived in Fitzroy. I lived opposite the... Um, a region Theatre on Johnson Street, Fitzroy. I know that. And yep. every Saturday there'd be three sessions and I would go to the sessions to watch the serials in particular. I love those serials. The radio serials? No, the, the, on the screen oh, after, the sh- the, after the movie tone news. There'd oh, be a, of course. There'd be a serial where the, where the, where the, 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 the cowboy would roll up, ride up with the girl on the horse. Hello, Pilgrim. And up to the top of the cliff and, the, and there's a shack on the edge of the cliff. Yeah. The whole thing would blow up and you'd have to come back next week to see where it went. It mm. was the beginning of all the soap operas, I suppose, and right, we, right. we made them. But I used to go into that cinema every, every session and I loved when the lights came down Hmm. that that magical sort of sense of taking you on a journey Hmm. and then channel 7 bought the theater and turned it into the tally theater so then i would go across and watch all the programs that were being made Hmm. and get to know the jobs of the cameraman and the sound guys and and then i ended up at crawford's how did you get the job i'd worked in radio as an office boy at um first at 3AW Hmm. with people like peter james uh, norman banks and all those people Uh and then i went on to 3ak um, Where no wrinkles fly. The good guys they were. At the, the good time. guys, that's right. Yeah. And I worked a lot with Grantley D, the blind DJ. Let the little girl dance. We were never allowed to be heard on air as the panel operator. Okay. But Grantley would wait until the very last minute as the song, the music was coming down, and then he would put the microphone on and not tell you. And then he'd ask you what the weather was or what the temperature was. And if you said anything, you would then have the general manager calling up saying, Don't speak on air. Mm. The good guys were a great bunch of guys. Yeah. Lionel York, yeah. you know, Graham Boyd, Pete Smith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Philip Brady would walk past because it was in the Channel 9 studios. And now there were all these guys are now friends mm. all mm. those years later. Mm. And then I went to Crawford's as a music editor and I did um, uh, a show called Hunter and Homicide. Tony... Tony Ward. Tony Ward. Hunter, yes, I remember that. That was black and white. Oh, dear. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it was. It was. It was black and white. And I remember the first day everything went to colour. I was doing... I was directing Matlock Police. And um, I came into the studio and what they did is all the, all the filing cabinets were suddenly red or yellow or blue. Right. Because now we're in colour. Yes, yes. So working at Crawford's was the next step in my career and, and, uh, and doing... I was always the bridesmaid. I did the second episode of a lot of the shows like Sullivan's and... And just going forward a little bit, you did that amazing wedding sequence with the Kylie and Jason... It was for, so amazing, wasn't neighbors. it? And, and, yeah. and Angry Anderson's yeah. singing Suddenly... As, as Kylie's walking down the aisle. I mean, that, that was, that's probably one of the most iconic pieces God, of television around the world. Where did you start in radio? I was a, a listener as a young boy in Roma in Western Queensland, and I got a request on the radio, and, and it was The Night Has a Thousand Eyes by Bobby V. It was on 4ZR, and the announcer said, this is for Gavin in May Street. And I was so excited, I jumped on all the beds and everything like that. And I think that kind of got me interested in radio. Yeah. And I was singing in a band, very badly, but uh, in Brisbane, and you know, doing Tin Soldier, Proud Mary, all those garage band songs. And I was driving home in the in the '64 Holden panel van from my job, and I heard this j- uh, ad for a radio school, Ben Beckinsale's radio school at 4BH. So I thought I'll try that because it'll help me communicating with the crowd while I'm singing songs. Well, I did the radio course, and halfway through, I started to love radio. I thought, this is great. So my mother rang me and said, oh, look, uh, you better ring Ben Beckinsale. There's a job up in Maryborough. And I flew up there the next morning in the Fokker Friendship, did an audition and got back into the manager's office. And he said, "Uh, it's film, not film. I went, sorry. And I thought, I've blown this. And he said, now, when can you start? I said, I can start right now. He said, now, go back to Brisbane, pack your car up and start next Monday. And that was six months in the bush. Then I got into 4BC in Brisbane for four or five or six years, and then I got the big job. I got offered breakfast radio at 3XY, which is the hottest radio station in the country. The rest of the station was rating number one, but breakfast was rating number three. And I wasn't the typical, oh, 3XY, fight a mile, how you doing? You know, I, I came from a fantastic kind of entertaining format. 
So I sounded a little bit different. And the next survey, we went to number one and uh, stayed there for three years. And then I went on to Fox and then Eon and working with Molly, which was totally horrendous and yes. thrilling at the same time. Yes. And then, you know, I, I got the countdown gig when I was at 3XY, so I was very, very lucky. You work with Molly. Do you have any stories that you could share with us? No, about? no. You have I, nothing no, to tell oh, us. No. I thought there'd be a gag of some sort <laughs> you could tell us. Well, the sad part about, for me, because I was on the air, was the Chevron, the nightclub down in St Kilda Road. Oh, yeah. It went to 7am closing. And Molly's due on air at 7am. So he'd come from Richmond, go to the Chevron, load up there, and come straight to air. So we had a few challenging moments. And that, he's an icon, Absolutely, obviously. yeah. And you were part of that whole experience with, yeah, with Countdown. Yeah. Weren't you fortunate to have those opportunities? I blessed the day that Paul Turner said, come down, take me down to yeah. Ripon Lee. Yeah. Um, he could have chosen anybody, but he chose me. He's Rod Hardy. And he's Gavin Wood. And we're keeping on, keeping on. Keepin on. on. <laughs>